In count one, the accused is charged with premeditated murder. In respect of this charge, the evidence is purely circumstantial. In his own country, he is a superstar like no other. He was the guy that defeated all the odds. When he ran, he set the truck on fire. He wasn't just running to run, he was running to win. The stunning murder case against the Blade Runner. He was charged Thursday with murdering his girlfriend. Once the darling of the media, the track star and Olympic athlete. It's a case that's riveted the world. The Blade Runner, the fastest man on no legs, charged with killing his girlfriend. You referred to this incident or this occurrence as an accident. Is that correct? That's correct. Wherever you go, you see it. It's you can't miss it. People are glued to this trial. Here you had this Olympic hero and this beautiful, graceful woman. Hi, <laughs> I'm Oscar State tonight. Um, he, he said to me that Uncle Mark, I loved her. And when he said it, he, he burst into tears. You fired at Riva. <laughs> I did not fire at Riva. <laughs> This is Oscar Pistorius' bathroom where he shot and killed Riva Steenkamp. Oscar is not a cold-blooded murder. I am of the view that the accused acted too hastily and used excessive force. I don't know what triggers somebody to do that. It's hard for me to speak of it, but to me, there's no excuse for it all. Zero. He put me through hell. He was verbally abusive, very emotionally abusive. The people that I think are at greatest risk to snap are those full-blown narcissists, the ones that are so full of themselves. I begged him on numerous occasions to go for counseling, and he just never did. The unanimous decision of this court is the following. On count one, the accused is found not guilty. Instead, he is found guilty of culpable homicide. I certainly don't think that this will be hailed in the world as a triumph of South African justice. Finally, it was over. The trial that captivated the world, the triumphant athlete, a hero who always seemed to beat the odds. Yet this challenge was even greater as Oscar Pistorius stood accused of murder. Mr. Pistorius, please stand up. In the packed Pretoria courtroom of Judge Tokozila Masipa, the Blade Runner confronted his fate. Guilty of culpable homicide. In layman's terms, manslaughter. According to the judge, Oscar Pistorius did not intentionally kill Riva Steenkamp, but acted negligently in firing four shots through his bathroom door. Riva's parents, June and Barry Steenkamp, seemed stunned. Her friends wept. Pistorius, who had sobbed like a child throughout the trial, now silent and stoic. The reduced guilty verdict washed over the crowd. Pistorius made his way through it, center stage in the saga that has become a nation's real-life soap opera. It's a big burden of us, of our shoulders and Oscar. Oscar's uncle Arnold gave the family's initial reaction. We would really like to show how deep grateful we are to, for Judge Masipa that he's found Oscar not guilty of murder. It won't bring Riva back, but our hearts still go out for her family and friends. Riva's mother spoke out to an American television network. Shocked, disappointed. You know, your heart drops because you, you just want the truth and, you know, and it's, it's going in the wrong direction. That's how you feel. Throughout the tense two-day verdict process, Pistorius was emotional, seemed overwhelmed, shattered. The accused was a very poor witness, an evasive witness. The accused Yet what became clear, Judge Masipa found Oscar's version of events more plausible than that presented by the prosecution. The accused was clearly not candid with the court when he said that he had no intention to shoot at anyone as he had a loaded firearm in his hand. The state clearly has not proved beyond reasonable doubt that the accused is guilty of premeditated murder. The countdown to justice was long and deliberate. Rivas doesn't have a life anymore because of what you've done. She's not alive anymore. 
Oscar Pistorius, the fabled Blade Runner. Oscar Pistorius is going to win it. Whose athletic achievements captivated millions, stood accused of murdering his beautiful girlfriend, a woman with the talent and poise to match her dreams. Hi, my name is Riva. Riva Steenkamp, a model and reality TV star, shot dead on Valentine's Day 2013. Four shots through the bathroom door of Oscar Pistorius's bedroom. I did not fire at Riva. Oscar, how do you feel the trial's going? Throughout the 41-day trial, Pistorius came undone. <laughs> she wasn't breathing. The story doesn't answer the question of why. As prosecutor Harry Nell, nicknamed the Bulldog, proved relentless. His intention when he fired those shots was to kill a human being. Nell hammered home his version of events. This was not an act of panic, it was murder. He was fixated on this anxiety and this vulnerability on this intruder. He was fixated on that. Vulnerable in the dead of night without his prosthetic legs. His version is consistent. That's how defense attorney Barry Rue described Pistorius. Convinced a stranger was in his home, the Olympian panicked. The trial has been all-consuming for everybody in South Africa. South African talk show host Jen Su is a friend of Pistorius. She found the idea Oscar was a killer unimaginable. It's difficult because I'm with friends and they strongly disagree with me. She wasn't alone. Day after day as he attended court in Pretoria, it was evident for many, 27-year-old Oscar Pistorius remained a national treasure, a hero and inspiration. When this marathon ended, Pistorius was just one of 37 witnesses, but it was the Olympian who Harry Nell took to the mat. I don't have to look at a picture. I was there. You killed a person. That's what you did, isn't it? I made a mistake. Man. You killed Riva Stienkam. That's what you did. <laughs> she wasn't breathing. I think we'll take an adjournment. <laughs> it would fall to veteran judge Masipa to navigate through it all. In the South African system, she is both judge and jury. A child of apartheid, Judge Masipa became a social worker, then crime reporter, a lawyer, and a now judge in this, the High Court. Late in the trial, an extraordinary development. Testimony was stopped cold. A proper inquiry as the prosecution requested a psychological evaluation of Pistorius. If ruled mentally incompetent, the trial would have been over. Forensic psychiatrist Alexander Sasha Bardet monitored the case. The results of the examination indicated that Oscar Pistorius was not suffering from a mental illness or disease. Wait, wait. Game on as the trial and the drama heightened. Pressure built. The superstar who had seemed indestructible seemed ready to explode. Out on bail, he'd get into a shoving match at a Johannesburg nightclub. Oscar's supporters worried. The man, who was such a force of life, might attempt suicide. You know exactly. You fired at Riva. Talented, beautiful, and only 29 years old. I think the way that you go out it's so important. You either made an impact in a positive way or a negative way, but just maintain integrity and maintain class and just always be true to yourself. And I'm going to miss you all so much. And I love you very, very much. With today's extraordinary verdict, reaction was swift and passionate. I'm, I'm completely astounded. Disbelief. Why? Because it is so different from what I thought would be an open and shut issue. How did you feel emotionally though? Oscar's your friend. Well, from that point of view, I was relieved for Oscar. I think this was definitely a best case scenario for Oscar. Late today, new photos were released. Oscar, the night of the crime, stunned and bloody. The verdict is in. Oscar remains out on bail until sentencing which will come in about a month. The legal battle is far from over. He was very controlling. It was definitely emotional, total manipulation. It was very abusive. You have a great feeling of invincibility that you can basically do anything you want 
and you're going to get away with it. Oscar's day tonight. Um, he needed a date at the last minute, so it's like, Reva, just throw your stuff together and come and be my date. Reva Steenkamp and Oscar Pistorius seemed like the kind of couple dreams are made of. People saw them and thought, wow, they're both so attractive. Mark Seal of Vanity Fair magazine and a 48 Hours consultant has written about the trial of Oscar Pistorius that is captivating the world. They were like stars. It was the story of a man who overcame incredible disability and then met an incredibly talented, beautiful woman, fell in love, and then tragedy struck. The tragedy runs so deep because Oscar Pistorius ran against the wind from his birth in 1986. Ran so fast, came so far, born without fibula bones. When I was 11 months old, I had both my legs amputated. And then um, when I was 13 months, I got my first pair of walking legs. His walking legs would soon take Oscar around the world. But the inspiration started with his mother, Sheila, who set the tone that allowed her child to become a champion. Years later, he shared the memory with Jay Leno. My mother just said to me in the mornings, you know, Oscar, you put on your prosthetic legs, the last I want to hear about it. You know, there's no disability in our family. His mother told him that the real loser is not the one who crosses the finish line last. The real loser is the one who sits on the side and doesn't try to compete. She became ill and she passed on suddenly. With his mother gone and estranged from his dad, 15-year-old Oscar turned to Mike Azzi as a father figure. He's always been a wonderful boy. To Oscar, he's Uncle Mike. There's never a conversation that's ever ended without one of the parties saying, I love you. Nearly 9,000 miles away from South Africa, here in Fort Smith, Arkansas, we found a man who knew Oscar Pistorius before he became an international icon. He was around 14 years old and he was jumping over hurdles. I was like, why would you do that? <laughs> and he was just, there's no, why not? Francois van der Watt, back then living in South Africa, sensed the determined boy needed better than his battered legs. He was wearing what we call exoskeletal prosthetics, which is pretty much wooden prosthetics and... Um, pretty primitive. Really very primitive. Together, Francois and Oscar decided to give Oscar the legs to match his heart, the wings he needed to fly. They called them blades. He wanted to be fast. He wanted to be a, a runner. Oscar Pistorius took off. God had a plan when he gave me these legs. I don't see myself as disabled. The Blade Runner was born. The world had never seen anything like it. He became half man, half machine, with the gait of a cat, and was able to run on these blades, and not only run, but to win. Pistorius would win races around the world and became an iconic symbol to his country and to the disabled community everywhere. He set the truck on fire. It was the most amazing thing. Sam Kalo Radebe, who lost his hands in an electrical accident, was Oscar's teammate. And so he was never a star in the team, but he was always just one of us. He's just one of the teammates. And London, 2012. Oscar Pistorius wins it for South Africa. South Africa Marked wins. achievements like no other. This was history. That's it, yeah. Oscar and Sam Kalo competed in the Paralympics for the disabled and won gold. All of us were hugging. There was also a very different type of victory, a legal one. This day is going to go down in history for the, for the equality of, of disabled people. The little boy with no legs won the right to compete in the Olympic Games against the best able-bodied athletes in the world. While he didn't win an Olympic medal, the world crowned Oscar Pistorius 100% champion. Just being able to come out here and represent my country has been very, very humbling for me. But in the swirl of international attention, staying humble was a challenge for Oscar Pistorius 
superstar. Well, congratulations on the Olympics. That's Thank pretty amazing. How does it uh... Some said I would never walk. I said, bring it on. So everywhere you look. This is my track day, just because this is. There was Oscar, 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 Oscar. Hi, my name is Reva, and I'm a contestant. Beautiful and smart. Model and aspiring actress Reva Steenkamp mm. was part of the celebrity society Oscar had run his way right into. Thank you. And everybody just said, wow, you know, who is that? Who is that woman? Modeling was now leading. And we're in Jamaica this year. To a reality TV show. Reva modeled from age 14, but she would also study law. Ambitious, compassionate, politically aware. She and her mother were longtime advocates of, of women suffering violence and domestic abuse. Just four days before she was shot dead, Reva was tweeting, speak out against rape in South Africa. Hashtag rape, crime, say no. She is the most amazing human being. Gina Myers and Reva became roommates and best friends. Everything about her, her belief system, her the integrity she had. She was a rising star of, of tremendous magnitude. Just like Oscar Pistorius. Oscar's a very, very sexy boy. It wouldn't take long for the two supernovas to find each other. He doesn't do it in like an arrogant, obnoxious way. He's a gentleman. He was definitely in love. But where some saw a magical couple, others saw an Oscar Pistorius changed by fame. People said he went from the humble, friendly, lovable Oscar to Oscar the Invincible. He was always still the same Oscar that I knew him the first time I met him. Except for one crucial thing. Oscar was now afraid. Not of the competition on the track, but of the crime celebrity can attract. And when I visited him and stayed at his house, and he turns on the alarm system and he's, he tells me, I'm sleeping with my nine millimeter next to my bed. With his gun? With his gun, yes. Two weeks before Oscar Pistorius shot Reva Steenkamp to death, the glittering couple had dinner with their good friend, Jen Su. We had a great, great night. Oscar was just different with Reva. Reva was for keeps. Oscar Pistorius, the golden boy, always had a woman on his arm. Just before Reva, there was Samantha Taylor, with a look that was strikingly similar. She's just really laid back, and she understands uh, some of the demands that I have, and uh, it makes my life a lot easier spending time with someone that's... Sam was only 17 when they met, Oscar 24. Life was instantly glamorous, a reality show. Photographers, for two years, Sam and Oscar were an item. Now 20, Samantha and her mother, Trish Taylor, sat down to tell us what life was like with Oscar Bastorius. They met at a rugby match. Our relationship happened quite fast. He was very charming and respectful. How did you feel about this, Trish? I mean, in a way, her first big love, really. Yeah, I was happy with it. They were happy together, and he would come to our place quite often. We had some really fun times with Oscar. We had some great, great times with him. We loved each other so much. He treated her well. He treated her with respect. But life with Oscar soon became complicated. I started noticing within about three months of our relationship, he got very agitated quickly. What set him off? A lot of things. A lot of things that usually wouldn't set someone off. If we fought about something that I was wearing, I would have to go change. He was very controlling. He always wanted to know where I was who I was with. If he didn't believe me, he would phone my family. And if she was somewhere where he didn't want her to be, then all hell broke loose. He would ask me to send photos of what I'm wearing. He would think I'm out partying, so I'd have to send him a photo. It was definitely emotional, total manipulation. It was very abusive. Did you advise her to leave him? Um, I, I didn't. I didn't want to be the one to say this has got to end forever because 
Does it ever end forever if a mother does that? Another issue for Trish was Oscar's preoccupation with guns. I hated the guns. I don't like guns. He definitely had an obsession with guns, so he was always at the shooting range, always with his boys, either racing cars or shooting. I think as time went on, we became used to the gun, which was crazy. There were two times where I did hide his gun from him because I did feel very feared. He was kind of like, where's my gun? I need my gun, I can't go to bed without the gun. And I just thought, you know, if there's a gun around, anything can go wrong. So I just prevented it as much as I could. Sam was a witness for the prosecution at Oscar's murder trial. She testified about his recklessness with guns, describing one incident when Oscar and a friend were pulled over for speeding. Then minutes after, they drove away. Oscar got very angry. About two minutes after, I saw Oscar take his gun and shoot out of the car roof. But the day that it actually happened, Sam told her mom about the incident. Nobody said a word. I think I was living in fear because we thought at that stage that Oscar was like the golden boy. So even though we could have spoken out about him, I think that we would have come out as these ridiculous people trying to cause trouble, and I don't think anyone would have taken note of it. By the summer of 2012, with Oscar's historic race against able-bodied Olympians looming, the pressure mounted. Oscar leaned more and more on Trish for support. I mean, he started phoning me and crying on the phone. At some times, it was daily. Did you suggest he goes and seeks, has therapy? Yeah, a lot of times. I begged him on numerous occasions to go for counselling, and he always promised to. And he just never did. What did he need help for? His behaviour. He was... And his past. His everything. You know, he had, I don't think he ever came to terms with losing his mom. I think it was a huge thing in his life. I think he was, in so many ways, a little boy that needed to be cared for. And he had never grown out of that. And in other ways, he could conquer the world. Just before Oscar was to leave for the Olympic Games in London, he made a stunning call to Trish. He didn't want to go. The day he was meant to fly, he phoned me and he said, I'm not going. I'm not going to the Olympics. And then he was just sobbing and sobbing and sobbing. He was quite childlike. Very childlike. Very, very childlike, yeah. Why did you stay with him for so long? I think beyond our imperfections and our fights and arguments, we loved each other so much. Sam rode the highs and lows with Oscar till there were acts of betrayal she could not forgive. First with the glamorous Russian model Anastasia Kozisova. He needed a date at the last minute. And then so one evening, Sam looked up at the TV and saw Oscar with Riva Steenkamp. I was heartbroken, definitely. I mean, you're sorting out your relationship with someone and he's on screen with another lady. And from them, we just never contacted each other again. What were your thoughts when Reva Steenkamp was shot and killed? I was devastated. Before I knew it, I'd fired for Did you sure. believe his story, <laughs> that he shot her thinking she was an intruder? It's so difficult to say. I did not fire at Reva. All I can say is that by the time Oscar was out of our lives, I believed nothing he said anymore. Absolutely nothing. Did you think when you heard that it was Reva who was shot that it could have been you? Yes, definitely. If you could see him now, what would you say to him? I did see him in court and he made eye contact with me and the first feeling was I needed to look after him, I needed to protect him. But then the next day, the very next day, he got on the stand and after sort of trying to reach out for me in a way, he stood there with a straight face and said, Samantha Taylor is a liar. And I thought, that is just him. That is just him. He will put anyone down. He's got no scruples. This is Oscar Bistorius' bathroom where he fired those four shots that killed his girlfriend, Viva Steenkamp. We've been allowed a rare look inside Oscar's home. I must admit, it's a little unnerving finally being here. I have terrible nightmares about things that happen at night where I wake up and I can smell uh, blood. I kept on shouting for Riva to phone the police. 
We've just driven into Silverwood's estate in Pretoria, South Africa. This is an exclusive gated upmarket community that prides itself on state-of-the-art security and we're driving to the former home of Oscar Pistorius. A home Oscar was forced to sell to pay for his mounting legal fees. This is number 286 Bushwillow Street. When you enter, it's like any private luxury home around the world with one crucial difference. It will always be remembered as the place where Oscar Pistoria shot and killed his girlfriend, Riva Steenkamp. The house has been empty and only recently sold for $450,000. It's now being prepared for its new owners. I'm standing in Oscar's bedroom, located on the second floor of his house. And whilst the place is empty, it's chilling to be right here where he and Reva were sleeping on Valentine's Eve 2013. God, I heard this noise. I interpreted it as being somebody was climbing into the bathroom. And I grabbed my firearm from underneath the bed. Gun in hand, Oscar made his way down this narrow corridor connecting his bedroom to the bathroom. It's a surprisingly long walk. Imagine even more so in complete darkness when all this happened 18 months ago. He then turned the corner and later told the court that he shouted to Reva to call the police before firing four shots through his locked bathroom door. The bullet holes are still in the wall. So I was still busy checking the bathroom and then I heard... In this the video, the defence had Oscar reenact his movements as part of their research. Pistorius, in another house, demonstrated what that night was like without his prosthetic legs as he made his way to the bathroom. Oscar told the court he went back to this bedroom to put on his prosthetic legs and get a cricket bat. He then returned to the bathroom to break down the door. It was then, he told the court, he found Reva slumped over the toilet. In that same video, Oscar's sister played the role of Reva. Oscar shows how he picked her up and carried her out of the bathroom. Oscar Pistorius told the court he made his way down this hallway from his bedroom and then walked down these stairs, 18 in all, carrying Reva's lifeless body to the landing below and leaving blood stains everywhere. Blood that left a permanent stain on the floor. But after 18 months of covering this trial, I must admit it's a little unnerving finally being here. I'm completely astounded. I don't see negligence in what he did. I see a reckless disregard for taking the life of another human being. The people that I think are at greatest risk to snap are those full-blown narcissists. That lack of fear allows them to do things that other people don't. The headline says it all. Oscar dodges bullet. With a guilty verdict of culpable homicide and not guilty of premeditated murder, Judge Masipa said her decision was based on Oscar Pistorius' state of mind. You killed him, you shot and killed him. Well, then you have to believe that there was a threat that was on my life. The version of the accused was that he fired shots at the toilet door. Their conduct of the accused shortly after the incident is inconsistent with the conduct of someone who had intention to commit murder. He shouted for help, he called 911, he called security, he was seen trying to resuscitate the deceased, and he was distraught. I think the verdict was one I would classify as disciplined. Judge Robert Holdman served on the New York State Supreme Court. I think from her perspective, maybe not from the court of public opinion, but from her perspective, she believed Oscar Pistorius' version of the facts, his viewpoint, that he did not know that that was her and he did not intend to kill anyone. Is it your defense? That you the judge's ruling was a crushing blow to prosecutor Harry Nell's case. You fired at Riva. These other versions of yours cannot not work. True. This is an example of a defendant getting the benefit of the state not proving their case beyond a reasonable doubt. 
Defence attorney and CNN legal analyst Mark O'Mara successfully defended George Zimmerman not guilty for the fatal so shooting of unarmed teenager Trayvon Martin. What she said to Pistorius with her verdict... He's found guilty of culpable homicide. Was you responsible because you caused a death in a negligent way. You should have avoided it, you could have avoided it, and you didn't. It comes as a major surprise to me, the judgment. Dr. David Klatso, who specializes in forensic science, strongly disagrees with the judge. Given the circumstances, given the fact that he admitted to firing the four shots, I can't see how she can escape the conclusion that he intended to kill somebody behind that toilet door. So she's made an error? I think so. But I can tell you this, that every single person in a legal capacity that I've spoken to, and I've spoken to many in the last 24 hours, has expressed extreme surprise at the outcome of this trial. Any reaction, Mr. Pistorius? The judge rejected the prosecution claims the couple argued that night. I think she completely disregarded all of the neighbor's testimony, saying they were all, they were all wrong. She, and she said they all got their information wrong. Neighbors testified they heard crying and screaming. The lady, the screams that I heard before was petrified, the female screams. But just before the gunshots, it was blood curdling. It was something that leaves you cold. It was a crying soft, loud. The crying was like, ah! They simply related what they thought they had. The evidence of witnesses must be rejected in its entirety. And the judge didn't believe Oscar's excitable tones in court could have been mistaken for a woman's screams. What did you say? I screamed, I said, get the f out of my ass. Get the f out of my ass. <laughs> Ultimately, Judge Masipa accepted defense attorney Barry Rue's description of the Blade Runner as a vulnerable, anxious man. You're a little boy without legs. You experience daily that disability, that you cannot run away, that constant reminder, I do not have legs. I am not the same. That's with him, he can pretend. Reva's family listened to the painful details as Oscar tearfully told the court he heard a noise in the dark and feared for his life. I thought that there was a burglar that was gaining entry into my home and then I heard a noise from inside the toilet. Before I knew it, I'd fired four shots at the door. My ears were ringing, I couldn't hear anything. And I sat over Reva and I cried. And um, I don't know, I don't know how long... I don't know how long I was there for. <laughs> she wasn't breathing. However, the judge told the court, even with a disability, his actions were not justified. Many have been victims of violent crime, but they have not resorted to sleeping with firearms under their pillows. The judge dismissed the text messages exchanged between Oscar and Reva as proof of where their relationship stood. In my view, none of this evidence from the state or from the defense, proves anything. But in the end, one of Reva's text messages read in court left a lasting and haunting impression. I can't be attacked by outsiders for dating you and be attacked by you, the one person I deserve protection from. If this is a seminal moment for domestic violence and the way we handle it as a society, then that's not a burden for us to be that poster boy. Athletes and experts know that this and the Blade Runner has set the world record can change a person for better or worse. You get treated differently. You get more things handed to you. And the sack that time to Mike Golick. Mike Golick, who played defensive tackle for nine NFL seasons, understands the seduction of adulation firsthand. 
you have a greater feeling of invincibility that you can basically do anything you want and you're going to get away with it. Golick now hosts ESPN Radio's Mike and Mike. I love Peyton Manning. He's yeah. one of the greatest players. With his co-host, sports journalist Mike Greenberg. I think that that era of invincibility comes not just from physical dominance when you were playing, but also from a feeling that whatever happens, someone's going to take care of it because I'm me, I'm special. Not just special, but immune from or above the law. Football player Ray Rice, who was shown dragging his unconscious fiance from an elevator on this videotape, was almost forgiven by his fans and his employers until this videotape was aired on Monday. Here we are again, dealing with the same issue of violence against women. Rice has been fired by the Baltimore Ravens. He lost all of his endorsement deals, and he's now suspended indefinitely by the NFL. What can we do going forward is pray that this was a, a moment in time that changed everything. This crime, like Oscar Pistorius's shooting of Riva Steenkamp, has caught the world's attention and once again linked athletes with violence in the public's mind. People often talk about athletes being a, a violent population. Mitch Abrams, a sports psychologist, is the author of Anger Management in Sport. You know, they're more likely to be involved in criminal behavior, and there's really no research to support that. But the perception also is, well, these guys are, are almost mental cases on the field, and they can't shut it off off the field. So we expect the, the gun charges, or we expect the abuse charges. Abrams says frequently athletes are their own worst enemies, too proud when faced with taunts or challenges on or off the field to just walk away. The people that I think are at greatest risk to snap are those full-blown narcissists, the ones that are so full of themselves. Where does it start from? Someone took a shot at your manhood. How hard is it to walk away? Just, just... Oh, oh, it, it's very difficult to walk away. It's very difficult when you get in that mode and that mindset to turn it off. And unfortunately, that's what can get a lot of guys in trouble. Sports is a microcosm of society. There are men out there who commit horrible acts when they put their hands on a woman. There are some of them who are professional athletes, and those wind up at the top of the newscast. Simpson, a former pro football star, was charged today with a double murder. I think that when we talk about professional athletes, we should be comparing them to celebrities, not to the average Joe. Athletes attract the same kind of attention as other celebrities, sometimes the wrong kind of attention. How vulnerable are these guys to attacks on themselves? I think judging from their own actions, they feel very vulnerable. And sometimes they are vulnerable. Sean Taylor, a player for the Washington Redskins, was shot and killed in his own home in 2007. Taylor was shot when he confronted an intruder. Oscar Pistorius has said he slept with his gun because he was afraid of a home invasion. Yeah, I believe that there was a threat that was on my life. You can have a whole separate argument of whether that's a good idea or a bad idea. But I think that forget about what they say. Can we move? The verdict is in, the trial is done. The story is far from over. We still have to wait for the actual sentencing. Uh, we still don't know all the technicalities of what that culpable homicide verdict will mean for him. Oscar Pistorius is out on bail, awaiting a different decision on the personal price he'll pay for his crimes. The range of sentencing is huge. It's essentially from zero to 15 years. Judge Masipa will be free to consider everything, from the events of that bloody Valentine's Day to the character and mind of the man. At the sentencing phase now, the judge can consider a number of important factors, including his disability, including his life experience, uh, his mother's experiences, and the impact that incarceration will have on an individual like Oscar Pistorius. Will Pistorius go to prison? Legal experts think it likely. My gut is that he'll probably get somewhere between three and eight years. I don't see negligence in what he did. I see a reckless disregard for taking the life of another human being. Dr. David Klatso shared a building outrage over the verdict. 
the feeling that Oscar Pistorius had gotten off too easy. Was justice served? I don't think so. I think that there's a problem. The problem stems from the South African culture of guns Oscar Pistorius embraced. What about sending a message on the issue of domestic violence? We have a, a huge incidence in this country of male on female violence and a lot of male on spouse violence. And this is not a good message to send across to the country. That verdict hit Twitter like a bomb with the hashtag justice for Riva. The prevailing opinion, Pistorius got away with murder. Well, he hasn't got away with it yet. We need to see what happens next. I can only continue to express extreme amazement. Amazement has defined Pistorius. And today, the child who courageously carved a legacy like no other won another victory. On count one, murder read, the accused is found not guilty. But something else was now evident. The man who conquered his disabilities was destroyed by his demons. For some, he'll always be Oscar Pistorius, the hero. But for others, he's Oscar Pistorius, the killer. Long after the verdict was read, this story will likely resonate. It has everything. Drama, two young, attractive people, the gun culture of South Africa, and of course, Oscar Pistorius, Olympic hero. Oscar Pistorius wins it for South Africa. It's not going to change anything because my daughter is never coming back. This day, the mother of a daughter shot dead, talking to an American that? television network, spoke for people around the world as if to say, take the spotlight off the killer and remember my beautiful child. We try to think about her immense talent, her warmth and sincerity. Riva was a person just full of goodness and we try to continue to think about that in our memory. Should the judge send Oscar Pistorius to jail? Chat now on Twitter and Facebook. is a real thing. It changed my entire life. Nate was a football star. Lauren was a sassy girl. They're always breaking up, getting back together. The loss, the breakup, it's tweeted, it's Facebooked. When they told me that they'd found her body, I remember just bellowing, don't let it be Nate.